Welcome to Grace River Church Online. My name is Sam Zastra. I'm one of the small group leaders here. And my name is Jen Hecht, and we're so happy to have you joining us. If you're new to Grace River or you're looking for more information about what's going on, you can visit the website on your screen. And if this is your first time joining us, we'd like to say a special thank you, invite you to text the word FIRST to the number that's on your screen. We'd like to send you a $5 Starbucks gift card just as a token of our appreciation for worshiping with us today. Thank you again for watching with us, and we hope you enjoy your time of worship.
Jesus, there's no one beside Ever the hope in my heart Hey, what's up? My name is Chris. Welcome to Church Online at Home. Hope that you're having an awesome week and a great weekend. And my hope in this teaching is that you take a next step as you meet, know, and follow Jesus. And so we are on week two of a sermon series that we're calling The Invitation. And uh, man, we're just talking about what God has invited us into. But before we go any further, I want to invite you to Easter at Grace River. Uh, we've got four service times for Easter at Grace River. April 2nd, that's Friday night, April 2nd at 6 o'clock. April 3rd on Saturday at 4.30 and then April 4th at 9 and 10.30. And so you can go to our website at graceriver.cc forward slash Easter. Uh, and if you call Grace River Church your home, I just want to encourage you, man, be sure that you're inviting people out to Easter, leverage Facebook, text a friend. Uh, we are just a couple short weeks out from Easter and it's going to be absolutely awesome. My threefold pastor promise, if you invite someone to Easter or even invite somebody online to watch Easter, uh, is that your friends are going to laugh. Uh, that they're going to have a chance to hear the gospel and they're going to get a chance to respond to the good news of Jesus. So that's my threefold pastor promise. I can't wait to see what God's going to do at Easter. And I'm just super, super pumped about, uh, about Easter at Grace River. And so come check out one of our, our four services. And I also have a quick I'm In update. Uh, those of you that have given to our I'm In initiative, I want to say thank you so much for giving at Grace River. Man, it's your giving that helps make the dream possible. Uh, people are able to meet, know, and follow Jesus because of your financial giving, because of your generosity. Uh, the I'm In project, we are in uh, the last nine months of our three-year capital campaign initiative, and I've got some awesome things to celebrate with you, uh, that, that God is closing that gap. In fact, we see uh, that we are only 13% away, 13.1% away from closing the gap on our $550,000 goal. And so I just want to say thank you for your generosity. Thanks for giving at Grace River Church. We know the best is yet to come. And so I want to encourage you, uh, if the Lord's blessed you uh, and financially and put you in a spot where you want to give and you don't know what to give to, I just want to encourage you to give to the I'm In initiative. And so uh, maybe you've got uh, extra stimulus package money or whatever uh, that God has blessed you with or a tax return. I just want to really encourage you. Uh, I'm not Jesus juking or anything like that. This is, isn't so I can buy a big jet or have a Porsche. Uh, we are expanding at Grace River. Awesome things are happening. We just purchased 1.6 acres of land behind us, uh, and we're looking to expand in the near future. And so we're able to do that because of your generosity. So thank you for giving at Grace River Church. So the invitation. Uh, I'm, I, I love the Bible, and I love what it has to say to us about meals especially. I love a good meal, and I love being invited to something that I don't feel like I belong at. Have you ever been there? Have you ever maybe had dinner with some friends or been out to eat somewhere and thought, man, I don't belong here. Like it's, it's that nice or that quality of a meal. Can you think of like the best meal that you ever had? I mean, like really think back and consider it. What's the best meal that you've ever had? One of my best meals that I've ever had is at Annie Gunn's. They should probably pay me to promote their restaurant in Chesterfield. It's so good. I mean, every bite of every meal that I have there is like, wow, this is amazing. And it's also one of those places uh, where I don't feel like I belong there. It's, it's so fancy, it's so nice, so upscale. I don't feel like I belong at a restaurant like that. Uh, recently though, I was invited to something that I definitely don't belong to, and that was this. I was invited, uh, I was at a Cardinals game several years ago. Do you remember when you could go to Cardinals games? Wasn't that awesome uh, to be able to go to a Cardinals game? Such a really cool experience uh, to be able to watch baseball, and I'm really pumped because the day is coming soon whenever we're going to be able to go back to Bush Stadium and actually watch a game. Like, how awesome is that going to be? Several years ago, though, I was in, like, section uh, upper terrace 425 somewhere along the third baseline, like, actually so high that it'll make your nosebleed, nosebleed section, right? And uh, I posted on Facebook a picture of my son and I up in the nosebleeds, and a friend of mine was on Facebook at the game, but he had private club seats in some kind of a VIP lounge that was air conditioned, that had all you could eat and all you could drink. And I'm like, man, that sounds amazing, right? So we're texting back and forth. And he said, hey, man, I've actually got a couple open spots. I would love to invite you to my suite. And I'm like, uh, yeah. And so I was invited 
And the invitation was such a gigantic upgrade that I didn't hesitate at all. That it was a pretty quick decision to say, man, I'm not going to stay in the cheap seats. I'm going to move into this club suite uh, where I can have all you can eat, whatever I wanted to drink, and just hang out uh, with, with a good friend from Springfield, Missouri, my hometown. And so I took him up on that offer. And in this story, in Luke chapter 14, we see an offer that's pretty undeniable as well. Uh, Jesus tells a story about a banquet. And I, that's one of the reasons why I love the Bible is the Bible talks a ton about food. Uh, and there's something to eating and connecting with people. Uh, but before we jump into this, I'm going to pray for you right now. No matter where you're at on the journey, I know there's a next step for you. I'm going to pray for you, and then we're going to dive into this talk. Father, we're grateful for today. Thank you for all my friends that are watching and listening today. Lord, I pray that every single one of us would know the next step that we need to take on our journey and that we'd have the courage to take that step. God, I'm grateful again for your word. I'm grateful for your presence in our lives. And God, most of all, I'm blown away that you want anything to do with us. So God, I pray that you'd help us to see that no matter where we've been, what we've done, or what's been done to us, you are absolutely crazy about us. It's in Jesus' name that we pray all of this. Amen. So Luke chapter 14 is where we're at. Uh, read along with me. Uh, Luke 14, verses 15 through 24. The Bible says this, Hearing this, a man sitting at the table with Jesus exclaimed, What a blessing it will be to attend a banquet in the kingdom of God. Basically, uh, this person tells Jesus, Won't it be awesome to be in heaven and eat in heaven as they're eating? And so this is just proof that guys are always thinking about their next meal. I'm always thinking about the next meal in this story. They're thinking about the next meal they're going to have in heaven. Jesus replied this, with this story, and again, the audience in this moment would have been an audience of religious leaders, so keep that all in mind. A man prepared a great feast and sent out many invitations. Many invitations, that's key. When the banquet was ready, he sent his servants to tell the guests to come to the banquet, it's ready. Now, banquets during this time period, as Jesus is telling the story, are crucially important uh, because whenever food was served, there was no way to really preserve the food afterwards. Like today we have a big feast, uh, and if a big group of your friends don't show up, it's okay because you can refrigerate it and have lunch for the next week, right? But that's not the story here, okay? Uh, we go on to see. But they all begin making excuses. So the, the master invites his friends to a, a dinner party, and they all have excuses. One said, I have bought a field. Uh, and I must inspect it. That's like one of the lamest excuses I've ever heard. I just bought some land and I got to go inspect it. I got to go look at the land that I bought. Recently, as a church, I mentioned to you, we just bought some land. And I will tell you, there's nothing exciting necessarily about buying land. I mean, what's going to be on that land eventually is exciting. But today I just look out and I just go, well, I look out the window and I could see it right where I'm standing. And I just go, yeah, it's, it's land. There's no big deal. But he buys some land and so he has to inspect it. Please excuse me. Another said, I have just bought five pairs of oxen. So basically, I bought five cows, and I want to try them out. I don't even know. Uh, to me, it's almost comical, because how do you try out oxen? I don't know if he's eating them or riding them. I'm not sure how this works. He says, please excuse me. And then another said, I just got married, so I can't come. I mean, he does what any real man does, blames it on his wife, right? Pretty awesome. And so uh, we know that Adam did that with Eve, right? Uh, whenever they sin, who did Adam blame his sin on? On his wife. In this story, the wife gets all the blame. And so, sorry, ladies. The servant returned and told his master what they had said. His master, this is a shocking reaction, was furious and said, Go quickly into the streets and the alleys and the town and invite the poor, the crippled, the blind, and the lame. After the servant had done this, he reported this. There is still room for, mo for more. So his master said, Go into the country lanes and behind the hedges and, the, and urge anyone you find to come so that the house will be full for none of those I first invited will even get even the smallest taste of the banquet man what what a powerful story and I'm going to unpack this a little bit and just talk about the excuses that we sometimes make uh, that keep us from saying yes to God first of all the excuses that this that these guys made right I just bought a field I just got some oxen I just got married again back to the excuses right but there are some excuses that we use uh, and that often cause delay. So two reasons why we delay at God's invitation. Because I believe this. I believe that God is inviting every single one of us to take a next step. And sometimes, right before we take a next step, we have this reason for delay. There's always an excuse, right? There's always something else that I have to do. Always something else that takes priority. It's not like this. We wouldn't say that God 
uh, isn't a priority. What we say, though, is, is that God's not number one. We give him a number, but we're for certain that he's not number one. And so what we do is we make excuses about why we can't say yes to God. And so ultimately, we say this because we simply say that it's not the right time, that at this moment, it's not the right time. So we get distracted with things. We get distracted by our possessions. So the things that we have will distract us. So we see that two of the three excuses were about possessions. It was about my land, right? Uh, or it was, it was about my oxen. And today, more than likely, that's not your excuses uh, for why you don't connect with God. But we all have things in our lives that we possess that if we're not careful, will end up possessing us. I'm going to say that one more time. We all have things in our lives that we possess, and if we're not careful, those things will possess us. We will become obsessed with what we own instead of being obsessed with the person who gave us those things, which happens to be God. And so one of the reasons, one of the major reasons we get distracted is our possessions, but it's also our priorities. It's, it's our, and a lot of times, and I think relationships are one of the most important things we can invest in, right? I mean, people are the investment that God wants us to make in. But here, here's what I want you to hear, though. God tells us uh, in the greatest command that there are two really important things that we should do with our lives, to love God and to love people. But it's in that order, to love God first and then to love people second. And if we're not careful, that can be a really easy switch to make happen. We can end up loving people first and how people make us feel, uh, being around them instead of saying, man, God, I love you first. And so, again, this is something that we get distracted by. And you can see that in the story, the people that first get invited to the banquet, the three people that get invited first, they all three had excuses. And every one of their excuses had to do with possessions or the priorities in relationships. And again, if the priority in the relationship was to, to, to God, they would have said yes to the banquet, but they said no instead. And so oftentimes, this is what I call the danger of the delay. Every single one of us know there's a next step for us to take. But we delay the next step because there's something else that we'd rather do today. And we always say that tomorrow I will. So what is your fill in the blank with the tomorrow I will? Like, for example, some of you may say tomorrow I will start a new diet. Is that what you're saying? That it, it's, it's something that I'm going to start tomorrow. And dude, I cannot tell you how many times I've said that right as I'm dishing out some ice cream, right? Uh, or right as I'm eating a candy bar or whatever it is that I know that I've eaten a cookie or a piece of cake. Like... I always will say, man, good thing I'm starting that diet tomorrow. And then what happens tomorrow? Well, you say, well, I'm going to start the next day and the next day and the next day. Maybe you say, tomorrow, I know there's somebody I need to forgive. I'm going to forgive them tomorrow. Maybe it's tomorrow that you decide that you're going to stop that habit. Maybe it's tomorrow you decide that you're going to make that change. I just want to encourage you, don't say yes to God tomorrow. Say yes to God today. Like, stop making the excuses. You can make excuses or you can make a difference with your life, but you can't do both. And so, man, maybe for you, it's deciding and making the decision to say, man, I'm done putting this off. I'm going to make God a priority in my life. He has invited you and I into this amazing relationship with him. And sometimes what we do, we don't know how to react to that kind of love and generosity. And so we kind of come up with excuses because we know that ultimately me saying yes to God is going to cost me something. It may cost me something in my relationships. It may cost me something in my friendships. It may cost me something with my possessions. But here's the thing. What we often do is we settle for the cheap seats when God has invited us into a VIP, air-conditioned uh, situation where we can have all we can eat and all we can drink. And I just wonder, what is it that God has invited you to that you're to this day making excuses to why you can't or why you shouldn't. I wonder what your next step is when it comes to this. And so reason number one is we just simply say that it's not the right time. And that's exactly what the three people making the excuse said. It's not the right time. The reason number two is I don't feel like I belong. And again, have you ever just been in a situation where you feel like you don't belong there? Uh, I was kind of a dorky kid in, in high school, middle school, and I I, I never knew where to sit at lunch. That was always like one of the most stressful times for me during the day because I never knew where to go. Like what table do I sit at? Do I sit with the jocks or do I sit uh, with, the, with the kids that had all the name brand clothing? 
or do I sit with the band kids or do I sit with the we had cowboys at our school and so do I sit with like the redneck cowboy crew like who who do I hang out with right and I always felt this tension because I never really uh, especially the first couple of years of high school never really had a group that I felt a great connection to uh, and I would go and I would sit at a table and I would, would always feel this feeling like I don't belong at the table I want you to know when it comes to the kingdom of God every single one of us belong that's what I love about the back half of the story. The first half of the story is all about people that reject the presence of God, that say, yeah, God's a priority. He's just not the number one priority. The second part of the story is intriguing because it's all about God's relentless love for every kind of person. So again, no matter where you've been, no matter what you've done, no matter what's been done to you, God is absolutely crazy about you. And we see that in the back part of the story. Let's look at the story again, just the back half of it. The servant returned and told his master what they had said, the ones that had made the excuses. His master was furious, and he said this, Go quickly into the streets and the alleys uh, of the town and invite. I want you to notice the kind of people that get invited to the banquet. The poor, the crippled, the blind, and the lame. The listeners of this story that were sitting at this table as Jesus is telling the story, the original listeners would have been wealthy religious people. Wealthy religious people looked down at the poor, at the crippled, at the blind, and at the lame because they were almost like in a different caste system. To look at them and to think that these were the people that got invited to the banquet. Not the wealthy elite, not the spiritual, it was the poor, the crippled, the, the blind, and the lame. Those were the ones that got invited to the banquet. You see, it had nothing to do with what they owned. It had nothing to do with their religious pedigree. It had everything to do with the fact that they were people that God loved. And I wonder today, it may be you listening right now that thinks, man, I've gone too far. I've done too many bad things for God to love and accept me. And I want you to know that you have an invitation to the banquet just like anybody else. And we sometimes think, I, Chris, you don't know what I've done. I've taken a million steps away from God. You have no idea the mistakes that I've made in my life. And you're right, I, I have no clue what you've done in your life. But I know this, I know what I've done, and God invites me into his presence. And I know what this story has to do with. This story has to do with categories of people that the rest of the world decided to throw out, but God said, no, you matter to me. And I want you to know if there's a fridge in heaven, your picture is stinking on it. God is crazy about you, and you have a spot at the table, just like I have a spot at the table, just like those three men that made the excuse have a spot at the table. We all get a spot. It's not about what I've done. It's about what's been done for me. And here's the thing. We have a responsibility, one big responsibility, and it's this. How will you respond to the invitation? We all get invited to something from time to time. You get it in the mail, or you get it in an email, or you get it in a Facebook message or a text message, an invite to a friend's party, an invite to a wedding or a wedding reception. And what do you do? You, you make a decision on whether you're gonna go or not, don't you, right? In this story, this second group of people made a decision to go. Look, see, after the servant had done this, he reported, there is still room for more. So check it out. That meant that they actually went, that the poor, the crippled, the blind, and the lame made it a priority to say, no, no, we're going to the banquet, right? And what we find out is there's actually room even more. And so, so his master said, go out to the country and the lanes behind the hedges and urge anyone you can find. Notice that. Anyone. Do you know who this whole Jesus thing is for? Anyone. It doesn't matter what your background is. It doesn't matter how you were raised. It doesn't matter what your religious background is. It doesn't matter what you've been, what, what your hurts, what your habits, and what your hang-ups are. Like, it doesn't matter. Like, this message is for everyone. Urge anyone you can find to come. So that the house will be full. For none of those I invited will get even the smallest taste of my banquet. The desire of God is that the house would be full. And I wonder what we can do to fill up his house. Maybe there's somebody that you need to invite to the banquet that you discounted and thought, there is no way they would ever show up to church. Maybe there's somebody that you need to invest in and begin to pray for uh, so that you can build a bridge to help them to understand that they're invited. Or maybe even you listening right now go, man, I don't fit in church. Uh, I don't fit in God's kingdom. And I want you to know you totally do. There's a next step for every single one of us to take. 
Maybe that next step is making a decision to say, I'm going to stop making excuses. Maybe the next step is you, you're going to say, not tomorrow, but today I'm going to make God number one in my life. Not tomorrow. I'm not going to put it off any longer that today's the day I'm going to make him the priority in my life. Or maybe today's the day that you realize that, man, you know what? The message of Jesus, the good news about the gospel is for you. The good news is, is this, is that God sent his only son to come and die in your place. And it doesn't matter what my background is. It doesn't matter what my baggage is. He died for me. So maybe today it's just you accepting that truth and saying, man, I'm going to believe for the very first time that Jesus is for me the blind, the crippled, the lame. I don't know where you're at on the journey today, but I really do believe there's a next step for you. Maybe you're listening and you're, you're thinking, man, there's a friend I need to invite to Easter. I just want to encourage you, man. Would you make a decision to say, I'm going to boldly text them right now. Like I'm going to get my phone out at the end of this message right here and just say, hey, man, would you come with me or join me online for Easter services at Grace River? I am so encouraged that you've watched today. I want to pray for you right now. I'm going to pray that you take this next step. So would you bow your heads, close your eyes with me, and let's pray together. God, I thank you for today. And I thank you for my friends that have watched. And I, I, I pray, Lord, that this message was received well, that people would understand their need for you. And, and Lord, that we would each and every one of us see that we need to stop making excuses. That instead of making a delay, that we would make a decision today to say, not tomorrow, but today I'm going to follow you. God, I pray for the person listening that doesn't feel like they're worthy of your presence. God, help us to see that it's not about what we're worthy of. It's about what you did for us. God, I pray for the person that feels like the blind, the crippled, the lame today because they've just been beat up with life. Things are difficult financially. Things are difficult relationally. Things are difficult uh, in what feels like every area of their lives. And God, I pray today that you'd help them to see that you are absolutely crazy about them. No matter the past hurt, shame, and regret, you love them. So God, I pray that you would help us to solidify that relationship with you. And then thirdly, God, I, I pray for those of us that know we need to be inviting people to the banquet. Help us to go out and let everyone know and to make your house full. God, inspire us this week to do that, to live on mission for you. It's in Jesus' name we pray all of this. Amen. Hey, again, I want to say thank you for, uh, for, for listening and for, for paying attention. Thank you so much. You are awesome. I cannot wait to see you out at Easter at Grace River Church. Four services. Check us out at graceriver.cc forward slash Easter. Hope you have an awesome day. Thanks. Thank you again for joining us at Grace River Church Online. Here at Grace River, we worship in three different ways. We worship through hearing God's word, we worship through song, and we worship by giving back to the God who gives us everything. And we believe that we are the owners of nothing but the managers of everything. And today, we have the opportunity to give online at the website on your screen. This is the way that my husband and I give, and it's super easy, and it helps to ensure that we're giving back to the God who gave us everything first. So thank you again for joining us, and we hope to see you again next week.